Welcome to this podcast series on the Game Changers, from radical idea to innovative business. Are you wondering how deep tech startups move out of the lab and successfully to market? Then this series may help to address some of your questions. I'm your host, Nino Tsurtsumia, and in this series, I interview technology experts from fascinating thematic areas, including space, energy, health, and quantum. In each episode, we will meet with a European Innovation Council, also known as the EIC Program Manager, and listen to their experiences scaling up European deep tech. In case you haven't heard of it, the EIC is Europe's flagship innovation program supporting research-based tech projects and game-changing tech companies and startups. Today, we shall be talking about agri-food and delving into the exciting innovations designed by two EIC beneficiaries, one from the transition and one from the accelerator funding schemes. It is my pleasure to welcome to the podcast Professor Rita Grosshart from the Transition Project, Three Parent Breeding Technology for Plants of the Future, and Mathieu Jo, founder and CEO at AgriV, leading the accelerator project AI Advisor for Agronomy and Food Safety. But who better to start the conversation with other than Ivan Stefanich, the EIC Program Manager for Food Chain Technologies, Novel and Sustainable Food. Ivan, delighted to welcome you to the podcast. Could you provide us with an overview of the impactful work done at the EIC while shedding light on the strategic approach that you take when managing your portfolio? You can introduce the challenges for 2023 and 2024. And maybe you can elaborate about the raison d'être for these challenges being proposed. Thank you, Nino. In our work program 23, we have accelerator challenge novel technologies for resilient agriculture. And this challenge is proposed to support mission soil and soil-based food production and reinforce sustainability of agriculture in deteriorating environmental conditions. In the same work program, we have Pathfinder challenge precision nutrition. It's designed to support prevention and alleviation of consequences of food conditions and NCDs caused by inappropriate nutrition. In Work Program 24, we have again two challenges, one accelerator, uh, food from precision fermentation and algae. It is designed to facilitate decoupling of food production from soil and unfavorable environmental impacts. Uh, We have also Pathfinder Challenge, uh, nature-inspired alternatives for food packaging and films for agriculture. And it is designed to support Mission Ocean uh, and reduce plastic waste all around us. So altogether, in those two work programs, we have four agri-food challenges with estimated budget of more than 170 million euros. But please note, uh, this is not all. For all other topics, we still have open calls in our programs. Perfect, Ivan. It's truly wonderful to hear about the exciting times lying ahead. Uh, Building on what you just shared with us, um, could you maybe elaborate on the main ESC programs and really show us differences between open and challenges calls? And what other additional supportive initiatives are there in order to help guide our applicants through? Our main programs are positioned along the whole innovation development path. Uh, Pathfinder and Transition are for lower technology readiness levels and usually are executed by research institutions and universities. Accelerator is for higher TRLs and is executed by a single applicant SME. So those are three main programs. Uh, To make those programs more efficient, we have smaller programs. Booster Grant for Pathfinder, Tech to Market for Transition and Business Acceleration Services. Uh, for Accelerator. They include educational activities, networking, and IP services, even consultancy support when appropriate. But instead of me talking about those programs, uh, it would be much better if you listen an actual tech-to-market beneficiary. And we have one with us today. Thank you, Ivan. And with that said, it's a great pleasure to present the Tech to Market participant, Professor Rita Crosshart from the University of Bremen, who is the principal investigator of the transition project called Three Parent Breeding Technology for Plants of the Future. Dear Rita, pleasure to have you join us today. Could you please tell us about these technologies and their importance? Thank you, Nino, for having me. Uh, Yes, uh, we are actually profiting from the amazing and uh, proactive portfolio management of Ivan, and we were privileged to be selected for the EIC Tech to Market program. This is 
A wonderful EU flanking measure that allows to transform basic researchers like us into entrepreneurs who can work passionately towards the dissemination and commercialization of their invention. And yes, with respect to our um, invention, to understand our technology, one needs to know that plants also have egg cells and sperm cells. And about 10 years ago, we were able to show that a plant egg cell can fuse with two sperm to give rise to viable offspring. And if now these two sperm come from two different fathers, the resulting plant can have three parents, one mother and two fathers. Although such so-called triparental plants rarely develop initially, they produce actually numerous offspring, making three parent crosses an efficient breeding tool for instant combination of beneficial traits from not just two, but three parents. And this can obviously accelerate breeding processes. In addition, however, we were also able to show that three parent crosses can bypass a hybridization barrier of the seed. And this hybridization barrier has in the past in classical breeding approaches restricted the combination of crop plants and wild varieties. And this now opened up the possibility of crossing previously incompatible plants in line with the UN sustainability goals and above all, making a large portfolio of climate adapted or pest resistant wild varieties available for plant breeding. And we teamed up with one of the leading European plant breeder, KWS, which dominates the global seed market of sugar beet, and the potato breeder, Adebo, to develop new plant varieties for sustainable agriculture. That's super interesting, Rita. Thank you. Uh, and as I gather, your funding period will end in October 2025. Uh, do you already have some future plans and can you already reveal some of them? For example, did you already conduct market analysis? And if there are some other interesting developments that you can share with us? Yes, uh, we conducted a market analysis. The total global commercial seed market is $45 billion, out of which the total global sugar beet market is $1 billion and the potato market $17 billion. Mm, while we are developing plants initially for Europe, we also want to go global as climate change is affecting the entire planet. Particularly for us, uh, tropical regions are the ones um, that we see that today face the challenges of climate change that actually will reach us tomorrow. And we therefore also set our sights on sub-Saharan Africa. With our market analysis, we first identified uh, top producing agricultural commodities in Africa, and we plan to focus on three crop varieties um, or crops, uh, cassava, sweet potato and yams. Thank you for that, Rita. Now let's turn to Mattia Jo, a CEO at Agravi, leading the Accelerator project, providing an AI advising tool for agronomy and food safety. Dear Mattia, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for your time. Could you tell us your thoughts on the role of AI in agriculture, considering multiple factors such as complexity, interdisciplinarity, holistic and life cycle approach, integration, digitalization, and the list goes on and on? Yes, of course. First of all, hello, everybody. Uh, nice to be here with you. Uh, so to understand uh, the role of AI in agriculture, it's important to understand uh, the actual state of agriculture and uh, the last decade of digitalization in agriculture. So in the last decade, uh, digitalization uh, received a lot of uptake in the agriculture. A lot of farms started to use different uh, digital solutions. And uh, we could see that primarily bigger enterprise farms uh, started to digitalize while leaving those uh, smaller ones behind. So today, the role of AI in agriculture is to support not just the big farms, but also all farms worldwide. And 98% uh, of all farms worldwide are small and medium-sized farms. So the role of AI in agriculture is to make it more available, to make it more addressable, to allow small and medium-sized farms to really receive the knowledge from the insights from different solutions uh, like chatbots, uh, simple to use applications uh, and, uh, and be able to change their practices. Without that, uh, simply digitalization will not receive so much uptake. So at this stage, the role of AI in agriculture is truly to de democratize the access to digital solutions. 
Thank you, Mattia. Very interesting. As I know, your project funding phase already started in June 2022. As Accelerator Beneficiary, could you tell us if and how the hands-on uh, approach implemented at the EIC has helped you grow and flourish? Yes, of course. So our project is based around the AI advisory tool uh, that allows farms to uh, chat uh, with the advisor and get uh, information about uh, pest risks, uh, the best uh, ways how to protect their plants uh, and uh, the compliant ways when to harvest uh, those crops. So this was the focus. Uh, the entire project approach uh, implemented by the ESC allowed us to really fast forward our developments with the AI advisor. So. At the moment, we entered the last quarter of our project, uh, so we are nearly finished with uh, with the project, and we are all, already live on the market with first versions of our AI advisor. And already at the moment, as we are speaking, we are rolling out uh, first customers with uh, multiple thousands of farms. So already we started to make huge impact, and we see that uh, without EIC, we couldn't uh, we couldn't develop uh, so fast and accelerate our project. So we are very thankful for that. That is amazing to hear. Thank you so much for your time and insights, Mattia. I now want to give the floor to our program manager, uh, Ivan, one last time. Ivan, tell us, please, why should the potential applicants take the plunge and apply to the EIC programs? It is well known that EIC programs are highly competitive. In a sense, they are like Olympic class of athletes, rare, but highly prized. Not everyone is getting a medal or a grant. Uh, that could lead to a big mistake, not even trying to apply. If there is a message from this podcast, that would be it. Prepare the application the best you can and submit it. You'll get the feedback and the opportunity to learn from your mistakes because we have resubmission opportunity. Remember, it's worth it being an AIC beneficiary. It's not only business changing opportunity, it's a life-changing opportunity. So hopefully we see each other in the interview during the evaluation process or in the portfolio meeting for EIC beneficiaries. Thank you so much for these words, Ivan. Uh, a big thank you to our panelists, Rita and Mattia for your valuable time today. This brings us to the end of our podcast, part of the series, The Game Changers, from radical idea to innovative business. We hope to see you next time.